We're about ready to settle down and make this happen, right? <laughs> As usual, we go with the reminder that we do not endorse anybody's products, books, whatever they say. It's up to them. We just, we allow them to sell their books and whatever they sell so that they'll come and talk. <laughs> and we get good speakers that way. And as usual, we do have a library of DVDs for those of you that still have a DVD in your house. And at our age, we just might. <laughs> but we're gonna try and get these down to streaming things. But uh, <laughs> right now we had a oh, 10 years worth of DVDs. So if you wanna see something that was presented some time ago, you can ask Pauline, who is not here today. I think she's on a cruise enjoying herself what was she thinking anyway she'll be here next week so if you need something she's the one to talk to and as usual the dues are due for uh, 2019 and if you haven't uh, paid yet and you want to use a check please use the stamp the ladies in the back have the stamp you do not want to write all that crap in there and if you don't, uh, it's not good. That's right. Marie has the stamp. Woo! <laughs> and as you know, we're going to have the secrets to stop aging today. Okay, for today, what causes aging? I thought it was just getting older, you know. Jeez. Always telling me something new and different, right? So we've got Dr. Kroll here today, Dr. Kenneth Kroll. He is a graduate of Harvard Medical School and finished uh, specialty surgery training at Stanford Medical Center. In addition to a 25-year busy surgical practice, he helped run a charity hospital for native tribes people in Free China for the World Vision Incorporated and conducted HIV AIDS trials for the ministers of health of both Kenya and Uganda in East Africa during 2002. He's formulated products for nine major nutritional supplement companies and spoken to large audiences all over the world, including United States. Of course, like I say, he's been to a lot of major cities in the United States, but who's counting those? We got Las Vegas. He was elected a fellow of the International College of uh, Surgeons in 1994 and was additionally board certified by the American Board of Anti-Aging and Regenerative Med Medicine in 2001. He currently in, he is semi-retired. And he's going to come here just to talk to us. Isn't that special? So let's welcome Dr. Kenneth Crow. <laughs> Thanks, John. Well, it's a great pleasure for me to be back here with all of you people who are adding 10 to 30 years to your life as a result of good eating, exercise, and the other things that do keep us young. I mentioned last time, but well, first of all, I want to th also thank uh, Ari Morachnik for the superb job of recording last event and this one. And apparently there are DVDs and things available that he can that the, that we can provide here, but it's also going out on YouTube, I believe. These two lectures that are, that for this year, um, and Larry Kaplan too. Thanks for all your help, Larry. It's been just great working with you and John. And of course, my wife, the lovely Diane, and her friend Sophia. So let's get underway with uh, what I think is going to be a very interesting time for all of you. Before I do that, I want to mention something that can save you all a lot of money. There are a lot of products, so-called health products, being advertised these days on the internet, advertised on the internet. I'm not talking about ordering things over the internet, which is fine, we all do that, but are advertised on the internet and on television. And my advice 
don't buy any nutritional product advertised on television or advertised on the internet. I've looked at dozens of them, and a lot of them are just phony baloney, and they're just grossly overpriced because they have to pay big money to, first of all, advertise their product on television. So that ought to give you a clue that whatever you're buying, you're going to grossly overpay for. So there's the first thing. Also, in our aged, aging community, over about age 65, a lot of you will get things like this, world's first medically proven anti-aging pill. America's top scientists study jaw-dropping results of new age-reversing phenomenon said to wash, repair, and restart each and every cell in your body. That is such a crock, it's unbelievable. <laughs> and, you, and you look inside the thing, and they've got, oh, they've got a list here of astonishing neurosurgeons, general surgeons, and all the vitamins and everything else, but they don't have the name of any individual that's endorsing this. None of the names are there. So again, don't become victim of this kind of nonsense. There's another one that came out to all our senior citizens called Regenify, the most important health pill of the 21st century. What another crock. Rejuvenate your entire body. Two trillion of your cells cleansed, fed, and repaired every single day. Whoever wrote this doesn't, doesn't understand that there are 70 trillion cells. So apparently the other 68 trillion they're talking about get poisoned with this nonsense. <laughs> so at any rate, beware of those things and never buy any of those things unless you know there's good credentials and somebody behind it that knows what they're talking about. Last time I mentioned I'd give you a quick uh, program to prevent Alzheimer's disease, which is epidemic in America today. So those of you who are taking notes, I didn't prepare a slide for it because I had so many slides already, but here are the notes to help prevent Alzheimer's. Number one, regular exercise. Been well proven, a 25% decrease in Alzheimer's for those that have a regular exercise program. And try to avoid overweight. If you're overweight, try to lose weight, and whether it's Weight Watchers or any, any other good program out there, try to control your weight. Those who are overweight become predisposed to Alzheimer's. And as you know, here in America today, we are the heaviest population on the planet, and the current trends indicate that by the year 2050, 50% 50 of us will be overweight diabetics. And all I can say is that portends some very evil times ahead for this country because I don't know any health care system that could stand the expense of 50% of the population being obese. So don't be part of that. Try to avoid diabetes and overweight. Overweight is the first step toward diabetes in what we call metabolic syndrome. Uh, the second thing is, besides cigarettes being the most damaging personal habit, the, the next biggest thing, and it's huge in this country, is sugar. Sugar is the biggest killer in America today. And it's in everything. And I think I shared with you last time that if you go in any supermarket and read the labels on bread, I couldn't find, out of 100 breads I looked at, one that was free of sugar. And they all have two to three grams, and Wonder Bread, the wonder of all wonders, had 5,000 milligrams of sugar per slice. I mean, that ought to be outlawed, it's so bad. And yet, uh, we all grew up thinking it was Wonder Bread. So uh, try to avoid breads. I'm gonna write a letter to a guy named Dave who has a pretty good line of health breads out there that are organic. So only eat organic bread. The best one I mentioned, I think, last time is Ezekiel 4.9. And that's uh, organic, it's sugar-free, and pesticide-free, and everything else. It's a great, it's a great, it's very hearty 
If you're used to eating white bread, it'll be a little tough to take at first, but it's all organic whole grains, and it's, it's, it's wonderful stuff to get used to. So avoid sugar in every way you, you can. All the soda pop that we eat, all the ice cream, the candy bars, you check out at any major supermarket, and there at the checkout stand on both sides are 20 or 30 different kinds of candy bars. And they're tempting because the statistics claim that sugar is eight times more addicting than cocaine. And those of you who keep getting a sweet tooth, you'll understand that. You really do have a desire. It's a true addiction to want to have something sweet. It bothers me once in a while. Uh, the third thing is eat egg yolks. Organic, get organic eggs that are that are free-range type eggs. Egg yolks are very rich in a substance called choline. And acetylcholine is the, is, the, is the molecule that transfers information from one cell to another in the, in the human brain. So Diane and I probably eat 15 or 16 eggs a week. We have three or four at a time. And only those organic eggs. And the average doctor today, unless they've changed, used to warn us not to eat more than two eggs a week because of, quote, cholesterol. The cholesterol in eggs is good for us, and it does not raise your serum cholesterol. And cholesterol is irrelevant anyway. This whole hokey thing about lower your cholesterol and keep it under 200, I think is a tragic mistake in the practice of modern medicine. And um, my cholesterol has been between 225 and 295 for the last 60 years. And I have no heart disease, no known serious diseases. I take no pharmaceutical drugs of any kind. And my blood pressure usually runs 120 over about 64. And that's a youthful type blood pressure. Blood pressure elevation is the first, first real serious tip-off that you're, that you're developing hardening of the arteries and atherosclerotic disease, which can lead to heart attacks and strokes. So any of you that have high blood pressure or are being treated for it, kind of be aware of that and try to follow a program that can get you off those things. I don't have time in this lecture to get into too much of the how I would recommend doing that. But at any rate, avoid sugar eat egg yolks, and finally, anti-inflammation supplements are important, and I'll just give you two of those. Uh, because we now know that all the chronic degenerative diseases of aging stem from an underlying chronic systemic hyper, uh, inflammation in our bodies. So anything that can avoid chronic inflammation in the body that is not a pharmaceutical drug is worth knowing about. And the two things I recommend are omega-3 fish oils. Omega-3 fish oils. Those come in 1,000 milligram capsules, as you know, they're a big capsule. And I'd recommend you take two of those every morning and two every evening. That's four a day, 4,000 milligrams. <clears throat> and it doesn't, it doesn't interfere with anything in the body except to keep you healthier. The brain, believe it or not, is very high in fat. So the quality of the fats you eat play an important role in how healthy your brain is going to be. And that's why you should avoid all deep fat fried foods, tater tots and potato chips and french fries and all these things. Avoid those things like poison and you'll do yourself a big favor. Potatoes, unfortunately, in the upper intestine turn almost immediately to sugar. So if you're trying to get rid of sugar, unfortunately, you have to kind of go very light on, on, on our white potatoes. Sweet potatoes are all right, and as long as it's not in too large an abundance. So omega-3 fish oils, and avoid the omega-6s. Omega-3s, through a fairly complicated, what are known as prostaglandin chemistry, for those of you who are into science here, the prostaglandins have two major systems. One is pro-inflammatory and the other is anti-inflammatory. So what feeds pro-inflammatory? It's all the vegetable oils. 
which is what all deep fat fried foods are done in, vegetable oils. So that means to get rid of all the safflower oil, the canola oil, the soybean oil, the cottonseed oil, and all these oils, corn oil. Now they're a really bad one today because of Monsanto's contribution of Roundup in the whole corn crop and soybean crop in this country. All the, all the, uh, all the dressings that you buy in the market for salad dressings. Look at, read the ingredients. And unless I'm mistaken, you won't be able to find one that isn't the number one ingredient, soybean oil. So make your own salad dressing at a home with a little bit of vinegar and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, and it works out just as well and you're not getting poisoned with these omega-6 oils. All the omega-6s are pro-inflammatory, all these oils, and the omega-3s are all, and the fish oils, the principal one of those, are anti-inflammatory. So you want to go the anti-inflammatory route with omega-3 fish oils. Okay, that's the program for Alzheimer's. Let's get into our, our program here for today. The secrets of successful aging. Potential lifespan is about 120 years. Heredity determines only 30% of longevity, but since only about one-third of aging is inheritable, the rest is acquired. That means you are responsible for your own old age. This was a very powerful study done several years ago by John Rowe of the MacArthur Foundation. Whoa, what happened there? Healthy lifestyles reduce the incidence of chronic disease and dementia, evidence from the Corfili cohort. And um, ah, this thing is skipping too much here. Well, healthy lifestyles, so we'll just go to that since this isn't just. What are the lifestyle choices that are important for living a long, healthy life? And this is worth um, taking notes on. Fresh, pure foods, filtered water, clean air. Our water here in Vegas, as I mentioned last time, has 455 parts per million. I think I misquoted that as billion last time. 455 parts per million of stuff. Because a lot of our water in this desert area has to be recycled every time you flush a toilet. That water gets captured, cleaned up, and put back in Lake Mead for you to drink next time. Doesn't sound very inviting, but it's, it becomes necessary for survival of a large population like we have here in the desert. Carefully chosen nutritional supplements. My book is the best source for all of those because I've spent years putting together the best supplements and the dosage in, to take for each one. And we have a few, do we have still a few copies of the book along? Just two here, okay, anybody can jump up. You better jump up right now and go over there and get one. Sorry, I didn't bring more of those along. <laughs> you can take an address too and I can, I, we can mail them a copy. It's, it'll be the best $15 most of you have ever spent on health subjects in your lifetime. Because uh, I don't make much money on it. It's a self-published book, and I only make a few dollars a copy. At any rate, uh, nutritional sub regular seven or eight hour sleep schedule, daily 30 minutes of exercise, and there's a thing called fast exercise, which has to do with the fast diet thing that if you may have heard about, but it just means very intense exercise for just a short period of time, so you're enough that you're sweating. And that daily, even if it's only for 15 minutes, is still a huge help. Meditation and stress management. Any of you that are into uh, meditation and understand that, and stress management, I'm gonna talk today about a powerful uh, supplement that has to do with stress management, and we have it here uh, today for you. No use of tobacco, cannabis, or street drugs. 
All of those things we now know uh, can have negative side effects, and as you probably have heard, 60,000 people a year in this country are dying from overdoses of street drugs, most of which unfortunately are still coming across the southern border of the United States. And one of the great tragedies of our time, in my mind, is that there has to be political debate on whether we should close our southern borders to prevent this kind of death going on in our own country. Um, wean, wean off of pharmaceuticals. Important to remember that all pharmaceutical drugs are toxic to human cell function. There's no exception to that statement. And I'm not talking here about vaccines or, or bioidentical hormones or antibiotics, because those are not drugs in my estimation. But all the other drugs, because they're single chemical substances that are foreign to the human body, all are toxic. And every drug you take, whether it's by a pill or you swallow, swallow as a pill or it's an injection, goes to treat every living cell in the human body, believe it or not. There's no such thing as a drug that only affects your runny nose or affects your heart arrhythmia. All drugs, because they circulate through the blood, affect all 70 trillion of your cells. And that's the problem with pharmaceutical drugs also. Um, and you can ask your, your doctors, because most of us by training are trained to prescribe pharmaceutical drugs to people. So anytime you go to your doctor and you go in with any complaint, the first thing that most good MDs will think about is what drug should I prescribe for them? And I've, I've seen people with, that are on 16 different drugs and wonder why they're going into kidney failure. Now, no one, nobody can survive the onslaught of that many drugs. So try to talk to your doctor about decreasing the number of drugs you're on every time you see them. Maintain a healthy weight, spiritual, social, family relationships we know add to longevity, and positive, happy, forward-looking attitudes. The common American diet is a disaster. Basic science behind these issues, lifetime and nutritional imbalances associated with us, that, that should have come up at this time. But we focus on lifestyle changes, and with the advent of ag agricultural and industrial revolutions, we have introduced numerous false inflammatory triggers in our lifestyle, driving us to a state of chronic low-grade inflammation that eventually leads to typically Western diseases. Plasticizers are a big part of this, for example, and of course, all the, um, all the other toxins that we get in a whole variety of ways. Sugar and carbs feed inflammation. Toxins and pesticides feed inflammation. Vegetable oils, like I mentioned, corn, soybean, canola, cottonseed, safflower, and sunflower oils all feed inflammation. Why? Because you already know they're all omega-6 oils that are pro-inflammatory by the prostaglandin chemistry that's active in the human body. Olive, coconut, and avocado oils are all right. The surprising link between inflammation and heart attacks, cancer, Alzheimer's, and other diseases. Death by sugar, in a very interesting article, avoid all white sugar and thousands of manufactured phony foods like all boxed breakfast cereals. It's an interesting story, if any of you are interested on the internet sometime, to see how Kellogg ever even introduced the idea of eating breakfast cereals in this country. It was foreign to human beings in Paleolithic times. But it's a fascinating thing, and I finally have come to a point of not saying that, oh, this one's all right and that one's all right. As far as I'm concerned, all boxed breakfast cereals should be avoided, and you'll be way ahead of the game. And whoever invented sugar-coated cornflakes ought to be hung up in the public square. <laughs> Link between sugar and Alzheimer's. I've already mentioned that. And here's a couple examples. The Coca-Cola conspiracy, 1915, it used to be a 6.5 ounce. And that, taking one of those a day would add eight pounds to your weight. 
And then in 1960, they got to 12 ounces. That adds 16 pounds of weight to your year. 19, what is it, 92? 20 ounces, 26 pounds per year. And the, the big mega gulp things, 1988, 44 ounces will add 57 pounds to the average human being every year. Twinkies, there's another winner. 50 ways to eat your Twinkies. They, they've got books out on this. And whoever it was came out with this deep fat fried Twinkies thing. Talk about a grease bomb. Americans consume 500 million Twinkies a year and 2.7 billion Krispy Kremes. There's one for you. Hope that discourages you from all stopping at the Dunkin' Donuts on the way out of here. And then we've got these things that when you go through the anywhere on the way to a plane, you can hardly pass up the place that are selling Cinnabons. Aromatherapy, the only thing better than the old fashioned aroma is the old fashioned taste. Boy, is that promotion or what? Onions, anyone? Talk about grease bombs. Onions that can be healthy for us. They found an ingenious way to make them toxic as you all get out. And then we have heart attack heaven. Here's another bunch of gems. And then, oh, the latest at IHOP. All you can eat pancakes with any breakfast combo. And I see people lined up there and I think, God, they don't know what they're doing to themselves. Now here's some healthy things. Obviously, fruits and vegetables, of course, and tree nuts. And this excludes ground nuts. What are ground nuts? Peanuts, exactly. When I was in Africa, they didn't call them peanuts there. They called them ground nuts. And uh, that's where I first came to understand that that was a ground that comes from the nut. All of these standard other nuts are healthy for us, and they all come from trees. And of course, wines, we know about wines are good, and fish of all type and seafood products, providing they're from clean waters, Alaskan waters, are also a source of great health. Whoop. God, what's going on here? Yes, moderate red wine consumption with meals has real health benefits. <coughs> then, excuse me. And those of you who are reading my articles that were here in the Sun City uh, magazine for, for almost two years, I did four articles on red wines that talked about which ones are good ones and so forth. Unfortunately, all Californian wines today are contaminated with Roundup. And even the organic few that are out there still have traces of Roundup in it from the stuff coming across from other vineyards blowing in the wind. So you have to be very careful. One of my specialties, I've always been a wine drinker and always had a hobby of wines, you know, never to get drunk particularly, but uh, just out of a hobby interest. I was into French wines. And I, used, and I visited the great chateaus of France, whether it's Mouton Rothschild, Chateau Latour, um, or Lafitte Rothschild. Those were famous, that now sells for two or $3,000 a bottle. But they were much cheaper back uh, when I was uh, testing these things out. But the point is, all French wines bought into the Roundup thing to get rid of weeds in their vineyards. So all French wines are off the table as well. What a disaster to one of the greatest wine producing countries in, in world history. The healing power of wine. This is a study done at Harvard. Dr. David Sinclair, professor of anti-aging research, the resveratrol in red wine activates the sirtuin one longevity gene. Where do you get resveratrol? Well, it's one of the chapters in my book for those that have a copy of the book. And you can read all about it and why it's beneficial and how much to take. It comes from the skins of dark grapes, interestingly. And uh, this guy is the first one kind of discovered all that. And that's a fascinating story in itself. 
Roger Corder, professor of experimental therapeutics in London, did a fabulous book that any of you have any interest in wine, you can pick this up inexpensively as a paperback and as a used one for probably 99 cents at Amazon Books these days. But it's a fabulous book, The Red Wine Diet, where he went around testing wines all over the world and found out where the really healthy ones are. It's a one-of-a-kind classic. There we are in Italy, uh, outside a couple of the big casks, Diane and I, being sure that the stuff was drinkable, and you have to take two or three glasses to be sure of that. <laughs> there we are in France, uh, also testing out, I don't know where this was, probably Mouton Rothschild, and uh, back in the days, of course, before we knew about the Roundup problem. Time, the science of living longer. So the stuff is becoming scientific and you're hearing a lot of the powerful science in this lecture series that I've given. Key supplements to arrest and reverse aging, which was the real uh, subject for this presentation. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and uh, first of all, I'll present this from a scientific point of view, so you don't need to copy this, because there will be one that has it more simply presented all the same thing on the next slide. But these are adaptogen herbal total body rebalancers, immune supporters, cardiovascular normalizers, intestinal biome rebalancers, phytonutrient anti-inflammatories, polyphenol longevity gene activators, that's what this wine does, for example, to the SIR2 and 1 gene that I just mentioned, and brain stem cell activators that I will also talk about here in a minute regarding this product that I brought. But here they are, adaptogens. These are, this is worth making a list of. These are all mentioned in my book and a chapter on most of them. Adaptogens, curcumin, comes from turmeric root, the stuff that turns uh, uh, soups and things, a uh, yellow, deep yellow color, and acetylcysteine. Um, the first big chapter in the book on there is of a substance called glutathione. Glutathione is the body's major antioxidant substance, and it's N-acetylcysteine, it's a precursor that when you take N-acetylcysteine capsules, it builds strong amounts of glutathione in all your cells to give you anti-aging benefits that are huge. Vitamin D3, also huge in its benefits. Uh, vitamin D3 strengthens the immune system for starters. It does all kinds of other things, and it doesn't happen to even be a vitamin. It happens to be a hormone that got misnamed once, and it comes from what molecule do you think that ultraviolet, when it hits the skin, what molecule in the skin do you think converts to vitamin D3? Cholesterol molecule. That's why I'm against this war against cholesterol. Cholesterol is one of the most important health-giving substances in the human body. And from my point of view, the higher your cholesterol, probably the longer you're going to live. Now, if there's any MDs here, I've, nobody stood up and denounced me yet, so I guess I'm on safe ground here. But um, then resveratrol, alpha-lipoic acid, astaxanthin, uh, tocotrienols, um, and omega-3 fish oils. There's my book, and this is the 2019 updated edition that we had here last time, and, and just sold out, but any of you who want one can order it by giving Diane your, your uh, address and and we can, we can send you one. Now, adaptogens, I want to get into this. This is, to me, a very, very important thing that has been a great benefit to me. Elite herbs for mastering stress, aging, and chronic disease. This is the father of adaptogens, Dr. Israel Iskovich Breckman, a pharmacologist and an MD in the Soviet system many years ago in the 1940s and 50s, 
has always been my dream to create a special formula to prepare people for life, to make them healthy, stable, happy, and to protect them from stress. Well, um, of the science, there, there were 1,200 scientists in this project that Breckman was in charge of that the Soviets determined to find substances that could show that their communist system was superior to our capitalist system here in the West. And so successful were they, they, they examined over 4,000 plants. And of those, they found about a dozen that had amazing abilities to improve strength and protect the body from stress. Now, Olympic athletes, for example, are under extreme stress when they're out to win these contests. So anything that could block or, or ameliorate in some way the damaging effects of stress would give their athletes an advantage. And that's why they went on this thing that cost them over $2 billion, 1,200 of their best scientists, 20 years of studies, and they first started testing this stuff in the 1970s, and it was at that time the Soviets started sweeping the field with gold medals in every field, beating out all the world in the Olympics. I had the good fortune of working for the company uh, back in the 1990s that brought these adaptogens to the United States for the first time after the Soviet system collapsed. And they had also hired uh, a track and field star for the Olympic training, Ben Tabachnik, uh, who I became very good friends with, and he spoke very broken English, and they would send Ben and me around to promote this product of adaptogens called Prime One at that time. Um, but at any rate, Israel Breckman. Now, here is what's really, really impressed me. The antiviral activity of the principal substance in this product that's right here in that of, of this good adaptogen blend is a thing called Eleutherococcus syndicosis. The street name for it is Siberian ginseng. You may have heard of that. But Siberian, it's not from Siberian. It doesn't happen to be a ginseng, but it got called that for marketing reasons. Antiviral activity of an extract derived from the roots of Eleutherococcus syndicosis. Most cold and flu viruses are RNA-type viruses. Eleutherococcus inhibited the replication of all RNA viruses tested. The great 1918 influenza epidemic called the Spanish flu killed 80 million people worldwide and destroyed entire towns. More recently, the swine flu, the Asian flu, the Hong Kong flu, the bird flu have killed large numbers. The 2003 SARS, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome virus, killed 50% of those over age 50 who became infected. All these flus are RNA-type viruses. In the last 25 years, I've been taking a shot of this stuff every morning since I was working for this company. I've had a total of two colds and one flu in 25 years, and I've had no cold or flu in the last 15 years. So I know this stuff works. I know there are people here that could give a testimony that they were with all their grandkids over the Christmas holidays with everybody sneezing and sneezing on the food and sneezing in their face as they were holding them, and yet because they were taking this every day, didn't come down with a cold or a flu. I mean, this is huge, because every disease you get, even a cold, unfortunately, in a very subtle way, decreases your longevity. It's because every virus that, you, that attacks you, the way that the virus is active, it goes into your chromosomes, into your DNA, and it replicates there until your immune system can rise up to try to overcome it. But that virus stays forever in its genetic imprint on your, on your chromosome. So the more colds and flus you have, and the sicker you are over your lifetime, probably the shorter you're gonna live. And it's that simple and that makes good sense. Rhodiola, that's the other thing that's in this product 
That was another one of those adaptogens uh, developed by the Soviets, maximizes energy, fights the effects of stress and aging, sharpens memory and concentration, protects against heart disease and cancer, and less anxiety and depression, and it enhances physical performance, blocks fat for lasting weight loss. All from just rhodiola, a whole book was written about that just for that reason. Now, this, is, this one really also uh, I thought was fascinating. Now, did I miss something there? Let's see. Yeah, the effects of rhodiola rosea extract. Yeah, this is huge. Uh, chronic stress causes depression and death of brain cells in the hippocampus area of the brain, which is where memory takes place, producing loss of memory. Rhodiola restored the serotonin levels, activated neural stem cells that grew new brain cells in the hippocampus, restoring memory. So this particular herbal substance goes to your brain stem and where there are stem cells, those are kind of pluripotential cells that can turn into anything, and activates them and grows them into new cells for the hippocampus memory area of your brain. That's huge. And I have to be a little careful. I'm taking too much of that or I become such a genius no one wants to be around me anymore. <laughs> now, here's one done at University of California, Irvine. Extension of Drosophila melanogaster life stand by Rhodiola rosea through a mechanism independent from dietary restriction while they were studying the effects of dietary restriction for lengthening life. But they could increase the lifespan of fruit flies by 43%. Well, you say, yeah, but we're not fruit flies. Well, can you imagine trying to do a study like this on humans for their entire lifespan? Almost impossible, and would cost billions and billions of dollars to try and pull off. Believe it or not, these little creatures, fruit flies, have many of the same genetic characteristics as human beings do, and, and they have wings, is all they fly around, whereas we don't. And um, they, they last only 43 days to, to 60, and they increase their lifespan from 43 days, which is their average length of life, to 60 days by giving them this rhodiola in their water. So, again, extension of lifespan by this rhodiola substance. What herbs are in LHL formula number one? That's the stuff I brought. It's the spuff, stuff that is a copy of the Russian product that I formulated, um, pulling out the best of the herbs that were in that original product, eliminating one or two that I thought were weak and weren't, weren't carrying their own weight. So we have Eleutherococcus, Schizandra chinensis, Raponicum carthamoides, Rhodiola rosea, Red Rishi mushroom, and Guarana seed. And there's a bottle of the stuff, what it looks like, a superior blend, and there's the list again of Eleuthero, Rhodiola, Raponicum, Ganoderma, uh, which is the scientific name for Red Rishi is Ganoderma lucinum, Schizandra, and Guarana. Use one dropper, squirt under the tongue, hold it for 20 seconds daily, and that's what uh, Diane and I both do regularly every day. And as I said, I have, haven't had a cold now in 15 years. Average adult American has two or three a year. Adaptogens block the damaging effects of stress, re-energize and renew all body systems, the most powerful health restorers on earth. So let's all plan together for a longer, healthier life. And thank you for your good, being a good audience. We'll take a few questions. Yes. Dupuytren's contracture. That's where your fingers are pulled down here with scar tissue inside. 
Yeah, and after this, raise your hand and he'll bring the microphone along to you so everybody can hear it. But uh, Dupertrans, um, uh, I used to operate occasionally on one of those. The best way to handle that, unfortunately, is surgical, to cut that scar tissue and remove it and kind of restore things to, so you're not cramped all the time and your finger is back out again. There's a similar disease happens in the penis. I was a urologist, so I won't tell you any big nasty urology stories, but it, a scar tissue forms in part of the penis and causes it to be bent, and it's called the bent penis syndrome. And I won't name who it was, but there was one famous president not long ago that the uh, girls he was spending time with all had made a point that he had a bent penis. <laughs> Some of you have probably heard the story, but I won't mention who it was, in fairness to a, our political figures. Another question from Dr. Somebody? Atkins and the Kilo diet prom promote the idea of high protein. What's your opinion? I think that was a, I think Atkins was right on. And his work, to me, is seminal in this whole field. There's a little bit of balance that needs to be brought into the idea of eating only a protein. And the big problem today is trying to get clean protein. Unless you're buying organic milk, and unless you're eating uh, meats that have come from uh, animals that have not been fed corn or soy, which are both GMO and round, loaded with Roundup, if the animals have been eating that, then their meat's contaminated with this stuff. So it's a big problem today. So whereas hamburgers used to be healthy, or eating chicken used to be healthy, or eating beef used to be healthy, it isn't anymore, unless you can get grass-fed and grass-finished. Because what happens to cattle is, even if they've been out in the fields eating grass, they get ready for butchering. They put them in feedlots where they're all eating corn and soy. So guess what? All the fat they take in is coming from corn and soybean, which are GMO and loaded with Roundup. So it's a big problem in our society. Our whole food supply is contaminated. Oh, last book just sold, yes. Hi, yes. You mentioned the benefits of wine, especially red wine. I hope you give me the right answer here. How about beer? <laughs> well, I think I could give you the right answer. Unfortunately, unfortunately, beers are made from grains. All the grains today are heavily, including wheat and everything else, and barley, which is where they often use, are all contaminated with Roundup. So uh, all the German beers, in one recent test I saw, every German beer was, had, was, was heavy and Roundup. So I don't know any way to drink beer safely today, except for one that happens to be, I just discovered this, not because I'm a beer drinker, but I was curious about it. Michelob Ultra now is producing, and that's Anheuser-Busch, is now producing a beer called Michelob Ultra, and it says on, and it's in a clear glass bottle, and uh, there might be one other thing on the Ultra, but it says made from organic grains. So if you're into beer, look for Michelob Ultra, where it states on the label in small print, made from organic grains. So they've discovered the problem already and decided to solve it for people. Yes. Um, you mentioned the fish oil pills being yes. large. Yes. I have a problem with swallowing them. Is there any other, is there a liquid? Yeah, if you go to, um, yeah, you can get liquid. Um, and you go to vitacost.com and look for liquid omega-3 oils, and they sell a very good one there that's been purified, comes in a little pint bottle, and it's not real expensive, and then you just use it, pour a little of that into your food all the time. Also, you can get smaller omega-3 capsules at Walmart now, uh, made by, I think it's Nature Valley that is the producer. And they've taken the same capsules and made them into smaller ones, and they have a little less fish oil in them, but you can swallow them easier, because people that have trouble with swallowing the big ones, most people don't, but uh, those are answers to your question. Um, a quick question on, I heard you, what you said about cholesterol 
clearly. Um, but statins are so widely prescribed now, it's just, uh, uh, you know, everywhere. Our, my doctor who is great, prescribes them, and yet, you know, I assume you, you prefer that people, you know, get off them. So get anyway, could you expand yeah. on that a little bit? Yes, good question. And I, yes, I do stand on that statement. Uh, my cholesterol, because as I said, it's always been between 225 and 295, and today doctors follow what I think is an idiotic rule that if it's over 200, they want to put you on a statin drug. Complete idiocy from my point of view, but that's the rule that doctors have to perform by today. And any doctor who didn't put you on it and that somehow you got a heart attack would probably get sued. So they're caught in this trap that they're all going to recommend it. I was on Pravacol and one of the other ones along the way, Lipitor, I think, way back when. But I got achy muscles. Now, why do you think, why do you think the statin drugs, in 50% of people, they start getting muscle aches? Well, it's very interesting. What happens is that statin drugs not only poison the liver enzyme system called HMG-CoA reductase that manufactures cholesterol for the body, but they also interrupt a thing called coenzyme Q10. And CoQ10 is a necessary molecule in the production of energy in all human cells. It follows an electron transport chain along uh, in the production of, of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. That's the ultimate energy molecule that all cells must have to survive, except for red cells, a little different there. So all your cells depend on these little energy factories called what? Mitochondria. There's a good word for you, mitochondria. M-I-T-O-C-H-O-N-D-R-I-A. We now believe that one of the major defects in the aging process is the damage to mitochondria because every living cell has to make energy to function and they make it in that little mitochondria that has to take, um, has to take a, a molecule and turn it into adenosine triphosphate. Now, when you interrupt by the, removing the CoQ10 from that process, that mitochondria can't make the energy as well anymore. And what that does is damage all your muscle cells that require energy continually every time you move. And when you're damaging your energy in your muscles, they start to ache. So the aching that occurs in muscles in 50% of people that are on statin drugs is coming because those muscle cells are, in a sense, slowly being poisoned. So to me, it's such a tragedy that we ever got caught by big pharma. But hey, if you were the CEO of one of the big Pfizer or one of these big companies that produce statin drugs, and you're making $10 billion a year, are you going to stand by and let someone denounce it? I better leave here before his lawsuit heads this way. <laughs> But yeah. the point is, you don't want statin drugs, from my point of view. They contribute nothing, to, in my point of view, from decreasing heart attacks and strokes. I've given you answers here today, including even omega-3 fish oils that are three light years ahead of statin drugs and being able to do that. And statin drugs, I think, are helping produce everything from brain damage to heart damage. I've got a question regarding that. Uh, about 20 years ago, I was given uh, 20 milligrams of statin. Right. Um, 10 years ago, the doctor increased it to 40 milligrams of statin. The reason being, he said it can help clear plaque out of the arteries if you take a larger dose. Yeah. Uh, we're all different, you know. Uh, if I die tomorrow, it's kind of okay. <laughs> but, because uh, I have not an ache or pain in my body, and I'm, I'm an octogenarian like yourself, so I, I think I'm just, you know, lucky perhaps, but if you could talk about 
if you know anything about whether it might clear plaque. Well, let plaque. me say something about plaque in arteries. Um, the big mistake got made back in the 1970s in a Senate Select Committee to investigate health in the U.S. And uh, a politician who subsequently ran for president, I won't name him because it's not important, but it was head of that committee at the time as a senator. And they interviewed different scientists to find out what caused plaques in the arteries that led to heart attacks and strokes. And <clears throat> they found out that all plaques have cholesterol in them. So right away, the big question was, and interestingly, the Harvard group said they weren't totally convinced that cholesterol was the nemesis, that it was the real problem. But since all plaques are rich in cholesterol, that's, and it got announced by this committee then that cholesterol was the great cause of all our heart disease and strokes. Drug companies at that point went quickly to work to find out where does cholesterol come from, found out an enzyme in the liver makes 70% of the cholesterol in your body. Now, to anyone that a little bit has reason still working for them, if your body makes 70% of some stuff itself, it must be pretty important stuff. But instead, the drug companies found out that the enzyme in the liver that manufactures cholesterol that serves huge functions, all your testosterone, all your estrogen, pregnenolone, progesterone, all your vitamin D are all made from the cholesterol molecule. So it's an extremely important health molecule to have enough cholesterol. But um, as a result of that study, the drug companies found a way to poison the liver to stop the production in the liver of a lot of the cholesterol. And it be that was the, the, the birth of the whole statin drug story. At any rate, um, that's about it, I think, to, to say about all of that. Yes, somebody else here. Right here? Yeah. Um, N-acetylcysteine. Um, if you don't drink a lot of water, seven, eight glasses a day, you can get renal stones. No. That's I not, read that. That's not true. That's not true. I used to deal with kidney stones, and you don't, you don't get it from taking uh, N-acetylcysteine. That molecule goes into the bloodstream, goes to all living cells, and within the cell it converts to glutathione, the major... Uh, yeah, okay, I should do this. Yes. The um, N-acetylcysteine is a nutritional supplement that goes in the bloodstream to all cells. And once it gets in the cell, it converts to glutathione, the major antioxidant in the human body for all cells. So it plays a really important role and it does not convert to kidney stones, so no one needs to worry about the usual doses of N-acetylcysteine. There are certain stones that are, I won't get into the whole story about kidney stones, but just for the sake of this question, don't need to worry about N-acetylcysteine producing kidney stones, I've never heard of that. Anybody else here now? Doctor, uh, currently there's a controversy about taking a baby aspirin for those who don't need have a heart condition. Yeah. You should take a, on a baby aspirin as a preventative measure. Well, the whole purpose, of course, for the baby aspirin is to, is to weaken the clotting mechanism a little bit in the body. And I've been back and forth on that whole idea. I don't think if you've got a good doctor that you trust and he's got you on a baby aspirin, I wouldn't sweat that, you know, go with it. But I don't think anyone needs that. The only time I would take an aspirin is if you think you have chest pain that could be a heart attack, take two aspirins. That'll quick thin your blood and might help prevent a major catastrophe from that chest pain turning into a big heart attack. Three things. Uh -oh. uh, <laughs> I love everything you say, and I've learned so much from you, Dr. Kroll. Um, krill yes. is one. Mm -hmm. um, Ezekiel cereal. Okay. And water. And water. Water. Yeah. What do you think of water? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mentioned that in the last lecture, but it's very important. I think that everybody should drink it. 
you know, follow your own thirst, but always drink, and that'll wind up in this dry climate, six or eight glasses of water a day, but get purified water somehow. In other words, Arrowhead Springs or Crystal or any of these that deliver these big five-gallon jugs, uh, my advice is to sign up for one of those so you're drinking pure water. Real you know, water's right here, excuse me, real water's right here in town. Real water's? And the, the factory's here, and it's all pure water, alkaline water. Good, thank you for mentioning that then. So those are the things you want. Drink, don't drink tap water here, which is really pretty foul stuff in this city, and it doesn't, as far as we know, kill anybody, but it tastes bad for starters, and who never knows, you never know what's kind of floating around in it. Krill? Krill? Yeah, oh, krill oil. Okay, well, krill has a little bit of advantage, but it's super expensive because of the high processing necessary to get krill. And so I don't recommend going to the big expense of krill oil, and almost all the products of krill oil are too small in amounts because it's too expensive. So I think you're much further ahead financially and even health-wise just sticking with regular omega-3 fish oil, as long as it's purified and the major companies today, whether it's Costco, uh, Walmart, or Trader Joe's, I use Trader Joe's myself. If you're not using the liquid stuff that Dr. Has. Mercola has a good has good products. Who? Dr. Mercola. Oh yeah, absolutely. If he sells that, yeah. Mercola, he absolutely. Does the yep. And, yep. The, and the Ezekiel uh, cereal. Ezekiel cereal. It's still cereal. a cereal, but Ezekiel is. <clears throat> what do you think of that? Well, it's organic and it's sugar-free, uh, but um, if you've tried it, you have to soak it for a while because it's just so hard, it's so dried, that I'm afraid you'll chip a tooth trying to eat the stuff. <laughs> so you either have to put hot water in it for a little while and wait for uh, 10 minutes for it to soften up a little, or literally, you might chip a tooth. I chipped one not too long ago. Here. Hi, I am a patient, I call it, of Dr. Curl, Dr. Cole, and I started going to him about five years ago, and I was on a lot of medication, blood thinners, three blood pressure pills, baby aspirin, statins, 40 milligrams a day. I started following his program. I lost 15 pounds. My blood pressure is perfect. That's what the doctors always tell me. I'm not taking any more blood pressure pills. And I eat a high protein, fruits, berries, vegetable, a lot of green vegetables. And I have gotten rid of all the sugar in my diet, except a glass of red wine, which I know must that have That deserves a clap, boy, I tell you. So <laughs> I highly, I, and I had had three TIAs while I was on all this medication. Since I got off of it and changed my whole diet, I have had nothing in four years. So I do, and I tell all my friends, and my family thinks I'm look great. <laughs> Very good, Barry. Thank you. That's Mary Cheslog, in case any of you want to know her and talk to her. Okay, well. Uh, yes, back there. Do Dr. Crow, uh, you say something about the water. Uh, what about the reverse osmosis? Well, reverse osmosis is a very effective way of getting rid of everything in water. So it's, it's a kind of a, almost the same as distilled water at that point. And uh, that's fine, you know, the RO methods, almost all these big water producing companies use RO to help purify their water. And because it's a little bland tasting when you've removed everything from it, a number of them put just a small dose of some, uh, uh, some minerals back in it to improve flavor a little bit. I can taste chlorine on it. You can taste chlorine? Well, they're not using RO then. Yeah, you better talk to them. They're selling you the wrong stuff. Yeah, ne ne next right here. I just have a quick question. Um, what is your take on drinking coffee and the health benefits of that? Coffee oh, or tea, I guess. Coffee. Okay. Coffee or tea. 
Okay, well, I'm not against caffeine if you don't overdose on it, because it can interfere with sleep, quality of sleep. So you have to be a little careful. And people are, are sensitive to caffeine in different degrees. Some people, they'll drink two cups of coffee uh, in the morning and they'll have no trouble. Some will have three cups of coffee in the afternoon and still sleep soundly. Others will just have one cup in the morning and they don't sleep well at night. So you have to see how it affects you. And uh, the only advice I would have for, for coffee or tea, buy only organic. Coffee happens to be one of the most pesticided crops in the world, second only to tobacco. And, when the, and coffee used to be raised in shaded areas. So if you can find, like uh, Trader Joe's has an Ethiopian shade-grown coffee, and it's organic, those start to become the ultimate forms of the way coffee occurred naturally uh, without pesticides. So organic, just go for organic coffee, organic tea. <clears throat> yes, this lady, you've been asking, you're waiting for a while. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you had the yes, thing, okay. Um, I have had a chronic pain a constant for the last 17 months. Had what? Chronic, chronic pain. pain. Hey, chronic pain. Constant, it doesn't ever go away from okay. between three and six uh, level. And the doctor wants to put me on gabapentin. I got all kind of medication, side effect to all kind of pain medication. Right. So what do you think of gabapentin or what do you think of CBD, crystals or AMP oil? Is that a treatment for pain or? Well, I I've believe, been taking it for a month, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is, how do you manage chronic pain problems? Well, it depends a little what the source of the pain is, but if it's just a general thing where you've got muscle aches and arthritic, arthritic aches and things of that sort, um, once again, exercise, believe it or not, helps reduce pain because it helps strengthen those joints. But in general terms, you want to increase your fish oil intake. That's anti-inflammatory. Um, and avoid sugar wherever you can. And uh, avoid the omega-6 oils, like I mentioned already. And add curcumin. Okay, okay. now let me just say a word about curcumin. Curcumin is a yellow, intense yellow stuff, but unfortunately it has very low bioavailability in the intestine. In other words, it doesn't absorb well. And it's been hard for companies to get around that, but there is one. If you'll write this down, it's uh, lef.org. You'll have to buy it over the internet, lef.org or lifeextensionfoundation.com, lifeextensionfoundation.com. And the product you want from them, give you time to write all that, the product you want is called Super Bio, B-I-O, Curcumin, C-U-R-C-U-M-I-N. Super Bio Curcumin. And that's a special, what's known as a BCM95 form of curcumin, which has much, much more effective bioavailability and it absorbs well through the intestine. That's the one that I take and Diane takes and the one we use exclusively for curcumin. So how can you stop the medication that the doctor gives well, me. Well, the, the medications, your doctor, you're going to have to talk to him about that. Okay. I would get on these substances. Okay. If you start to notice less and less problem uh, with pain, then, t then either decrease the, the pills on your own or go and tell him to please reduce it. You want to get off drugs. Okay, thank you, doctor. I have a question about... <laughs> yes. I have a question about your opinion of Brita water filters, number one. Number two, my functional medicine practitioner has me on bromelain instead of baby aspirin. Bromelain. Yeah, well, that can be helpful, too. Yeah, I have nothing against bromelain. And the Brita water <clears throat> filters. And the, uh, what was it? 
Brita water oh, filters? Oh, Brita water. Well, it's a bit interesting to see the battle between Brita and Zero Water, those two competing systems. And I've bought both of them. And Brita helps reduce it to some degree. Um, so it's okay if you want to use a Brita filter, but I don't think they work real well. And the Zero Water really does reduce everything in the water to zero. Uh, but they get expensive because you have to buy new filters to put in the Zero Water. And if you got the kind of contamination we have here in Vegas, you'll wind up spending $38 for a new filter every month. <clears throat> well, I was under the impression that distilled water is bad for you because it takes minerals out of your bones. No, that's not true. You know, it's not going to remove any minerals from your bones unless you're on a milk-free, meat-free, everything-free diet. Yeah, but... Um, you don't want distilled water. You know, if you want to get any of these other waters that have a little bit of mineral added, even though it's not important. But another thing, don't use soft water. A lot of people have big soft water tanks in their homes. And unfortunately, soft water predisposes to atherosclerosis. And you want hard water if you're going to drink water uh, because it has the magnesium and minerals in it that help keep the heart and everything healthy. But once again, if you buy it from one of these reputable big water companies, they, they've solved these problems. And you can discuss it with their, their salesmen. They know what they're talking about. Where? <laughs> oh, yes, finally, this lady here. I'm sorry to wait. Uh, what do you think of um, collagen and biotin, uh, like collagen drops in right. water? For nails and hair primarily, biotin and uh -huh. collagen. Both good. Oh. I'd include both of those in your diet. Yeah. And then turmeric with uh, that cuminin? Well, turmeric um, comes in all kinds of forms, unfortunately, and most of them don't absorb well. That's why I recommended that super biocurcumin capsules from Life Extension Foundation. That solves all the problems with that. And the last is grapeseed oil. Grapeseed. Is that good? Oh, grapeseed oil. Because um, I heard a, it was good for, like, uh, yeah, if it's you not, sautéing something. It's not as good something. as it's made up to be. Grapeseed oh. is a powerful form or source for what are known as oligomeric proanthocyanins, OPCs, that I talk about in my book. And that's the best way is just to follow the advice in the book. Okay, I know a lot of you, and it's all right if anyone has to leave. You've got... Oh, yeah. One question. Yes. Does the water softener interfere with your reverse osmosis? Because I have a water softener. You have an RO system also? Yeah. Well, no, the RO system. Separate. Yeah, why, why, why do you get both? It doesn't make any sense. It, unless you have one for showers, because soft water lathers well. That's kind of been always the big That's selling point. Dr. Kroll. Yeah. Could, okay, well. I, could, could you please comment on bone health um, and specifically the interaction of vitamin K, calcium, and, and uh, well, K2 and vitamin D? Whoa, you're getting into some complicated uh, chemistry at that point. Um, yeah, vitamin. Vitamin D in massive doses, I recommend incidentally 5,000, and for all the adults here, 10,000 international units of vitamin D3 a day. And everything out there is D3, incidentally. And you get those uh, capsules best at Walmart, they have the 5,000, otherwise most of the Ds are 1,000 and 2,000 and whatever. But you want to get 5,000 little capsules and take two of those a day. Um, and what happens with large doses of vitamin, <clears throat> vitamin D, it affects calcium absorption in a way that, that um, uh, affects perithyroid gland function. This is, this is a little too complicated to get into. And if you've got a a good source of reading about this subject because best you kind of make up your own mind on the basis of what you're reading on that. But um, um, you can take K2 
I use a product that I'm not, I don't want to talk about here because I'm not making it available to anybody here, that unfortunately you can't buy on the internet anymore. And it has to do with the production of nitric oxide in the lining of the arteries. The way the arteries stay healthy is with nitric oxide and there's a form of vitamin K uh, called um, NK7. Uh, NK7 form of vitamin K2 uh, is, the, is the really super healthy form of that. So you should look for that if you're into trying to find a healthy vitamin K, which is worth doing because vitamin K2 plays very important role in maintaining arterial health. But you want the NK-7 form of vitamin K2, and you can, you'll have to look for a product of that. You can buy it separately. Well, listen, I think probably we ought to, there are people probably have to get home to dinner sometime before midnight. <laughs> so thank you all very much again for this thing. <laughs>